All right, chapter 5-2, we are solving equations with variables on both sides. And this will be a throwback to what we did in chapter four. Now, remember in chapter four, I talked about the wall a lot and it's not really a wall, but it's just kind of a visual way to remember that combining like terms, that's just doing a little work on each side, doesn't change the balance of your scales, right? Distributing into parentheses, doesn't change the balance of your scales. You're just kind of rewriting the same thing in a, in a more concise, simplified way. Same thing with combining like terms. If you have 5m and 2m on the same side of the equation, you just write them as 7m. It hasn't changed the weight, so it doesn't offset the balance. So you, it's not like you have to do it on both sides. But when you get to actually moving things from one side of the equation to the other, that's where kind of that idea of the wall comes in where if you do it on one side, you have to do it on the other because you got to keep things balanced. Same thing today. The only difference today is last week we were only moving numbers and today we're moving numbers with variables. It doesn't change at all how you do it. So I think this should be a pretty easy review. All right. As a review, the steps, and I just said them, so hopefully you guys were listening. What's step one when you're looking at an uh, uh, solving an equation? What's the first thing you should look for? Well, that, that's, it's always a good thing to kind of pull back and always overlook the equation for sure. Um, but it starts with a D. First thing you should do if there's parentheses is distribute. So our first step, if there's parentheses, is to distribute. Okay, and this is a review of last week. What's our second step? This is even before we get to the wall idea. Starts with a C. Ends in like terms. Combine, almost, combine like terms. Now, like I said, these two steps don't change the value of a side, right? If you distribute a two into parentheses, you don't do anything on the other side of the equal sign, right? If you combine five N and two M, on the right, you don't do anything on the left. It's just simplifying and kind of repackaging and making it neater, okay? Step three is where you actually start moving terms left and or right. And this is, and I just kind of put this in here as a reminder, this is kind of where the wall idea comes in. Step three, okay? I'm gonna put a little squiggly line there. Step one and step two, you just simplify. When you get to step three, which is moving terms actually from one side of the equal sign to the other, that's where you've got to think about anything I do to the left, I have to do to the right. It's got to keep that scale balanced, okay? Now, I will tell you that on your homework today, on your homework today, um, you will not have step one and step two. All of these are simple enough equations. You're not going to have any parentheses. You're not going to have to distribute. You're not going to have to combine like terms. So you need to get in the habit of looking for those things in that order, that DCM, right? That distribute, combine like terms, move. But I will tell you that on your homework, all you're going to have to do is do the move part, okay? All right, so um, I'm going to 3G minus 12 equals 9G. I'm going to actually work it down here so I have more room because I will tell you guys for your homework, you're going to need a separate sheet of paper because there is no room. So that was 3G minus, what was it? Minus 12 equals 9G. All right, so here's the first uh, example we're gonna do. Now, I'm actually going to work this two different ways and I'm gonna show you that you get the same answer either way, but there is an easier way to do it. Okay, and that's why I want to show you both ways. Okay, most everybody gets in the habit of, and it's it's a fairly good habit, but it's not necessary. Gets in the habit of always wanting to move the variables to the left, and that's fine. That's that's a fine habit, right? So, if I move the the goal of solving, first of all, you have to get all of your g's on one side of the equal sign, right? I told you there'd be nothing to combine because three g minus twelve, one has a g, one doesn't can't combine them, right? So now we need to start looking to moving things left and right. And we need to get all of our G's on one side and all of our numbers on the other. And it doesn't matter which side you pick. Now, like I said, most everybody's kind of knee jerk reaction is to get the variables on the left. And I'm gonna work at the first way showing you that, okay? 
So if I want to get all my G's over to the left, that means I need to get 9G off of the right and moved over. It's currently a plus 9G, so I'm going to do a minus 9G. But if I do it to, remember, this is where your wall comes in. So if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. Okay. And my equal sign is going to stay right where it was at. And that kind of goes back to what Eli was saying of being always mindful where your equal sign at equal sign is at. Okay. You already had 3G over there. So now we have to subtract 9G from the 3G we already had over there. So three, my, and that's why, that's why I wrote it right under G. You'll notice I always line up things. When I'm moving things left and right, I always line it up right under the other thing over there that's common so that I can easily simplify it. So 3G minus 9G is negative 6G. And I didn't do anything with that negative 12. And then 9G minus 9G on the right leaves me with zero, okay? Now I've got the G's on the left, which means I need to get all the numbers on the right because they have to be on opposite sides. So I've got a minus 12 G, I'm gonna plus 12, it's not G, sorry. I have a minus 12, that means I'm gonna add 12 to both sides, okay? That leaves me on the left, negative six G, my negative 12 and positive 12 cancel out, effectively moving my 12 over to the other side. And I'm left with 12 over here. And then I have to divide that negative six off because my final step is always that division, right? Of getting my variable all by itself. And so I've got G equals negative two, okay? That's my answer. And I'm gonna check it here in a minute. But first, I think this is, it's a harder way to do it. And here's why. You have nine G over on the right. If you move the three G over there, you don't have to mess with moving the 12 right? As long as they're on opposite sides, it doesn't matter whether it's left or right. So since I only have 9G over there, what if I move my 3G over there to combine it? Okay, 3G is gone. I'm left with negative 12 equals 9 minus 3 is 6G. Divide by 6 and divide by 6. And I get G equals negative 12 divided by six is negative two. Notice my answer. And I don't care that it's backward, okay? G equals negative two, negative two equals G. That doesn't matter to me. But notice it was a step shorter. And the reason it was a step shorter is because I didn't have to move the 12. There was no reason to. If As long as you have all your Gs on one side and all your numbers on the other, it doesn't matter which side. So if there is an easier move, take it. Okay, now with all of these, there is the checking step. So I'm going to go back to my original equation, which was 3G minus 12 equals 9G, right? That was my original equation. Everywhere where there's a G, I'm going to plug in a negative 2. So it's going to look like this. 3 times negative 2 minus 12 equals 9 times negative 2. See what I did? I took my original equation, which was 3G minus 12 equals 9G. And everywhere where there's a G, I plugged in what I found for G. So three times negative two is negative six minus 12 equals nine times negative two is negative 18. And then negative six and negative 12. Well, if you're negative six and you go deeper negative 12, that's negative 18. So my check works as well. So you're going to circle your answer and then you're going to circle your check. Okay. And that's why when I originally did the assignment, I just did odds only. And there was 17 problems. Then when I realized it was solve and check, I thought 17 was a bit excessive. So I knocked those in half. Okay. So for each problem, you're going to solve it and then you're going to check it. All right. So let's do another one here. Um, Let's do 7C minus 7, 4C plus 7C. 7C minus 7 equals 4C, what was it? Plus 17? Yes, plus 17. All right, so here's our example number two.
Now, no parentheses, nothing to distribute. You got seven C minus seven. Those are not like terms. One has a C, one doesn't, can't combine those. Four C and 17 on the other side, can't combine those. So that means we're getting, we're to the step where we have our wall. Now, this is a case where it's gonna be a double move no matter what, because you have numbers and C's on both the left and the right. So you're gonna have to do it in two moves. You're gonna have to move your C's to one side, your numbers to the other. It doesn't matter which way you go, as long as the equal sign, you have nothing but C's on one side and nothing but numbers on the other when you kind of get to the, toward the end. So the first step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my C over and since it's a positive 4C, I'm gonna do a minus 4C from both sides of my wall. Because remember, I'm gonna do it on both sides to keep my scale even here. My equal sign stays right where it was at. I had 7C minus 4C. Well, when you're subtracting and adding like terms, you just look at their coefficients. So seven minus four is three, keep the C. 4C minus 4C is gone from that side, leaving me just 17. Now I'm halfway there. Now I need to get all of my numbers on the right since I put my um, variables on the left, all my numbers go on the right. So it's a minus seven. So I'm gonna do the opposite, which is plus seven. Equal sign stays there again. Now my negative seven and positive seven cancel out, which is exactly what I wanted to happen. So over on the left, I'm left with just three C. On the right, I have 17 plus seven, which is 24. And now I'm ready for that last step of breaking that tight bond of multiplication by division. And I'm left with C equals eight. Okay, that is my answer portion or my solving portion. Now I'm gonna go back up to where my equation was. Seven C minus seven equals four C plus 17, right? That was my original equation. Everywhere where there's a C, I'm gonna put an eight. So I've got seven in the parentheses, eight minus seven equals four in those parentheses. I'm gonna put an eight in place of the C. Okay, now I need to do a little bit of simplification on both sides. Seven times eight is 56 minus seven. And four times eight is 32. And then plus 17, because I didn't do anything with that 17 yet. And now let's do our final addition and subtraction and see if it checks out. 56 minus seven is 49. 32 plus 17 is, woohoo, 49. So it checks out. Solving and then checking, okay? And when you check, if you don't get 49 equals 49 or two equals two or zero or zero or negative 10 equals negative 10 or whatever, if you don't get it to come out, that means you made a mistake over on your solving side and you need to go back and figure out what you did on your solving side, okay? Are we good with that? All right, um, let's do one more example like that and then we'll do one word problem example and then we'll be done. So let's take number 19 and I should be able to fit it up here so I don't have to use room down there. So I've got eight in minus six equals negative nine in plus 11. Okay, that's our problem. Eight in minus six equals negative nine in plus 11. Again, right, nothing to distribute, nothing to combine. So we're to the wall step. So if we think about our equal sign as our wall, we need to get all of the ends to one side and all of the numbers to another. So if I look at my negative nine in, I can, get rid of it on the right by doing a plus nine in, right? Because negative nine in and positive nine in are gonna cancel out. But whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other. So underneath the other in, I'm gonna write it on the other side of the wall or the equal sign. Now on the left, I've got eight in plus nine in, which is 17 in. I didn't do anything with that minus six, so I'm gonna leave it alone for right now. Negative nine and positive nine cancel out, which is, that was the whole point of that move, leaving over here just an 11. 
Now I've got my variables on the left. I need to get my numbers on the right. It's a negative six. So I'm gonna add six and add six because I always wanna do the opposite. That leaves 17 in on the left. And then on the right, 11 plus six is 17. I'm gonna divide by 17 on both sides and I get N equals one. Now I need to check. So here's my original equation right here, okay? Wherever there is a parentheses, I'm gonna put a one. So that's gonna be give me eight parentheses one. Here's my original equation right here, okay? Minus six equals negative nine times one plus 11. That's plugging a one in here and here, everywhere where I saw an N. Eight times one is eight minus six. Negative nine times one is negative nine plus 11. Now that's taking care of all my distribution. Now let's combine here. I've got eight minus six is two and negative nine and positive 11 is also two. So my check works. So my answer worked and my check worked. We're good with that. All right, I wanna do one problem that is like a story problem. You don't have to take the time to write this whole sentence out. If you wanna go back and scoot forward on the video to this part, you can, if you want the sentence written down in your notes, but you don't have to. All right, so I'm gonna do number 21. It says twice a number is 60 more than five times the number. What is the number? Well, our unknown is the number, right? What is the number? That's what we're trying to figure out. Where well, I'm gonna let X equal this number, all right? So if X equals the number, everywhere where I see the number, I'm gonna use an X in its place. So two times a number or twice a number, how could I write that? What do you guys think? Two times a number, and for the number, I'm gonna use the variable X. So two times X, I could write it as two X, right? You're okay. Now is means equals. And I think on your homework problems, it actually uses the word equals. But if you see is or you see equals, it means the same thing. So two times a number is 60 more than, so 60 plus five times the number. Well, if two times the number is two X, what would five times the number be? Five X. So now I've written myself an equation, two times a number, two X is or equals 60 more than 60 plus five X or five times the number, okay? So now I need to move some variables around. So I'm going to minus five X and minus five X because I wanna start moving things left and right of the equal sign. When I do that, 2x minus 5x is negative 3x. You gotta be really careful about your signs when you're, doing, when you're dealing with uh, adding and subtracting integers. Leave 60 over here. I'm gonna divide by a negative three and divide by a negative three and I get x equals negative 20, right? Now my original equation was 2x equals 60 plus 5x. That was my original equation. Everywhere where there's an X, I'm gonna plug in negative 20. So two times, use your parentheses here, negative 20 equals 60 plus five times negative 20. Okay. Two times negative 20 is negative 40. 60 and then five, positive five times negative 20 is negative 100. 60 minus 100 is negative 40, so my check works out. So my answer is here, and my check worked out, negative 40 equals negative 40, okay? All right, uh, for those of you at home, make sure you take notes in your binder and hit load to pull up your assignment in Cami and show all your work. And if you have any questions, send me an email.